So this is my C2 ship in Star Citizen, and this is the ship in Blender. Let's kind of go through and have a look how they've built this ship and some of the tips and techniques that we could probably extract from it to start implementing into our own models. So let's start off by looking at the exterior of the ship and we can just see how nice these hull panel lines are. Also, take note of the material. Um, we'll go outside for a little bit of a closer inspection a little bit later, but just, just uh, keep that in the back of your mind. Now over into Blender, the hull panels are just thinking decals. They are literally just an image. So with all the materials still loading, if we kind of zoom all the way in, let's left click on that. And we can see that these lines are just decals. That's it, it's just an image. I mean, there are some areas which are uh, geometry, but majority, if I press H, that's what the ship looks like without any decals. Now, the other cool thing as well here, here's another decal. This is just a plane of grime that's sitting just above the engines. And if we have a look, can we shine it? Can we get a nice view? We can see there on the center of the ship. I don't have a mouse, can't show you. But you can just see how there's just that kind of like that grime that goes over the wing. Um, even the upright bit there, we can see some grime. And I'm sure if we go back and have a look, we can see those decals there as well. So it's such a very subtle, beautiful thing on how they've optimized such a massive ship. Coming back into the material, we can see that the material is very simple. So there's no edge wear, and we can just see it's just a flat material. None of that jazz, it's just mm, gorgeous. Let's now go around and we'll have a look at the underside of the ship. Let me just go Control Z and unhide those panels. And we'll come in and let's go have a look at kind of like this area. So at the moment here, we're looking at one of the engines. And I just kind of want to really focus on the panel lines here, just getting a really up close look at what is geometry and what is just a decal. So we'll specifically look at this area. Let's see if that's geometry or a decal. I believe it's geometry, but I don't think it is. Underneath, here we are. Let's have a look. Under here, let's have a look. So if we go into edit mode, we can see that these are all pretty much decals. These are all pretty much decals. That's all it is. Um, obviously, even these parts here are decals. Now, just quickly, the question is, well, how do we do this stuff in Blender? So maybe first I should just mention what a decal is. Decal is an image texture. Um, it can be just a diffuse. It can be just a glossy. It can be just a roughness. It can be all everything all combined. It can be a normal map. It could be a displacement map. But I'm going to use this as an example. Shift D. We can see we've got two identical cubes. And what I'm going to use is decal machine. So if I press D and I go slice, we can see that now when it loads, We've uh, created paneling, and that is just an image. That's all it is. But obviously we can do other things with decal machine. You know, we can dump these things in. Uh, what's that? It's probably gonna be an air vent. There we go. And we can see that it does give us that 3D view. Um, for instance, if we come back into this, you know, come back into this mesh, let's go D, come into what I've been starting to build up. Let's go rotate Z. You know, you do it like this, Shift D. Let's maybe go Shift D, rotate 180, GY. And now we've kind of created this look of it being bolted together. But at the end of the day, it is just a cube. So that's been one of the ways I've been trying to improve my workflow. However, decals work well in Unreal Engine 5.2 because they brought back in the displacement and that's what kind of gives it that depth look. However, NVIDIA Omniverse don't have this option yet. So that's why I'm still focusing on creating extra geometry. So if you want to go down that route, there is another tool called KitOps, which is, I believe, free. And there's plenty of libraries out there for KitOps. Uh, so for instance, let's go, I'll just pick a cutter, for instance. Let's select one of these cutters, G. Let's add this insert and we'll put it here. Uh, let's pick another one. Let's go complex cuts, add insert. Whoops, didn't have a mesh selected. Um, and then we go like that. We can see that we're adding in geometry to our cube. I do like decal machine. It works super good in Blender. If you're planning to stay in Blender, it's awesome. But with decal machine as well, you can make texture packs and trim sheets and so on and so forth, which is mwah, excellent. But let's go do some exploration. I'm gonna open up the main area. And I figured we'd look at kind of like one of these panels here, um, just compare what's geometry versus decals. So if we can see, actually pay attention to the lighting, we can just see that there's kind of like a roughness map on top of uh, the plain material underneath. And that's what's given it that dirty effect. We don't see any edge wear, anything like that. But let's go have a look at what this looks like in Blender now. So looking at it now in Blender, we've pretty much got the exact same effect. 
However, when we go into solid mode, we can see kind of like this bottom section down here was a decal. This line here doesn't look like it was a decal, but there seems to be some decals lying along the edge there. And we can see there's decals all along here. I don't know what those are. Let's go back and have a look. Well, actually we'll do a comparison. So we can see how the bolts are on either side, all these little bits of extra information. And the fact that the mesh here is actually fairly plain which I'm very jealous. This looks absolutely amazing. Even on top here, we can see there's a little decals on top of the bolts, just to give that little bit of extra information. Uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the actual floor now. Once again, no edge wear, but there is a, just like a ton of detail on there. Go away, I don't care about commodity price right now. Comparatively, just stinking images everywhere. Um, we can see kind of got a whole image here, this bit in the center. Let's actually have a look what the decal sheet looks like. Let's find the material that it's part of. I reckon it's probably this one. Oops, control L, we have all that selected. Somewhere down here, and it's going to be this material. And so we can see that this is the decal. However, if we kind of go in close, what we're actually looking at is just stretched far off into the distance. It's actually genius. This one here will probably be somewhere else in this map. There we go, just that little bit there. That's all that is. This one here looks a little bit more complex and uh, I can't actually find the decal that it's sitting on. So the next best way to find out which material this is actually a part of, if I go select, well, we know we can see everything in here and how they're being utilized. So we know it's not that one. So let's deselect all that. Select, no, select, there it is. And so that little part, let's just go hide. That's where all that information is coming from. Uh, so let's have a quick look down this tunnel as well. Um, very pretty tunnel. Going to the main cockpit, the only cockpit. I love the animation of the door and we might do that in a different video on how to animate that type of door. But we can see, hey, you get stuffed. We can see the amount of detail on here. And as you can probably tell and guess that, that this is all decal haven in here. Um, if I don't think we'd have to select each individual mesh. Even if we have a quick look at this door and all the details on this door, I can tab it in edit mode and yeah. Now that you see it, you can see just the amount of decals involved in this thing. So all these little images, <laughs> just gonna love it, love it. And how we've got all the red lines, the circles, so on and so forth. Like in saying that, hang on, let me walk. Let's, let's, that this isn't amazing modeling. This is off tap, you're oh my goodness, gorgeous pieces of work. But it's more, I just want to do a breakdown of some of the tips and techniques that they've done. Like this bag, for instance, here, that is all mesh, but it's a beautiful texture on top. One of the biggest things I've learned is the amount of lights that they are using. So we're kind of looking at it from this angle. If I go Alt-H now, that's how many lights are on this ship. There is a ton of lights. And even if we're in here in the main cargo space, like, look at them all. For some reason, I don't know why, but I've always only had like the one major light lighting up the whole scene. Where here they've got so many individual lights. Now I think one of the big thing about that is, is it adds to the volumetrics in the scene, but as well, it's just, it gives good shadows, so on and so forth. Cause so for instance, I've just thrown on some decals with the lights on it. Come in, let's throw a little light light, area light. Uh, come in, we can give it a bit of an orange tinge. And then we might do the same for on the other side. And then if we were to come in, add a mesh, shading, and we'll go volume, delete, and then we'll make that a volume scatter into their sunshine. I always like to go 0.1 on that, 0.95 on that. I mean, that's a, uh, it's a little bit intense there. We've given that little bit of an extra glow using these kinds of lights. And then obviously if something walks past it, it's gonna be casting a shadow over here, so on and so forth. And so that's one of the main things that's changed my perspective on how to do certain types of modeling. Um, and as more, I just really want to share those findings with you. Let me know in the comments below. what do you think? Did you like this? Did you like this breakdown? Do you want me to do a breakdown of another ship? Leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, will you? Yeah?